Hey friends, Jamira here, and I am thrilled to welcome you to another episode of Living Well-Rounded. Today's show is unique in the sense that we are discussing a topic that feels taboo to some people, but it is a topic that I have wanted to chat about for a while now. And so as we all go into a new year, into a new space, we all want to have some cash in our pockets, right? We want cash in our pockets, money in the bank, and we still want to be able to do the things we love. And so I thought it would be fitting to bring on an expert to tell us how we can do just that. And today I am chatting with Allie Williams, who is going to share tips, resources, and some insights on all the things related to financing, budget, and much more. So get your notepad ready and let's get into today's show. Hey there, friend. Welcome to the Living Well Rounded podcast, a curated space for those of us seeking an intentional life filled with grace, passion, and purpose. I'm your hostess, Jamira, wife, mama, life and biz coach, educator, dessert fanatic, and on the ultimate mission to get you closer to your idea of what it means to live well-rounded. Right here is where you'll find exceptional resources, noteworthy tips, community, and relatable stories, no matter what season of life you're in. Take a break, cozy up, hang out with me for a bit, and let's dive in. All right, so let me give you a bit of background on our guest for today. So Ali Williams is the founder and CEO of Financially Focused, a financial literacy company helping people create a flexible financial plan they can actually stick to. No deprivation here. She has helped hundreds of people pay off debt, build savings, spend on what they value, invest, and feel confident with their finances. She paid off six figures of debt while still saving, investing, and buying season football tickets. Allie's work has been featured on Business Insider, Authority Magazine, Thrive Global, GVL Today, Cola Today, WSPA 7 News, and more. Allie has her MBA in finance and lives in South Carolina with her husband and son. She spends her time at football games, Go Gamecocks, and with a Starbucks latte in hand. Well, Rounders, let's welcome Allie to the show. Hey, Allie, how are you doing today? Yay. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Super excited to dive in and talk all about money. Yes. Money, 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 (laughs) money everywhere. I was just sharing with you that my husband and I are trying to get things together in the new year and get our money counted and calculated, um, which is important when you're trying to make some big moves. And so I'm super excited to chat with you because I feel like you are the perfect resource in this season that I'm personally in, and I know someone else will be blessed by what you are sharing. So thank you for joining. Um, And so for those who are not familiar with you, could you just give a little intro on yourself, what you do and all the things? Yeah. So I'm Allie Williams. My company is financially focused and, um, you know, our goal really is to help people create flexible financial plans they can actually stick to. I think, you know, money's still such a taboo topic and it doesn't have to be, and it can be fun and not stressful and budgeting doesn't have to be overwhelming. So my goal is just to help provide information, strategies, accountability, support, um, and help people kind of just get their finances in order. I love that. And I like how you just are so light with it where you're like, finances can feel taboo and money, like people don't want to talk about it and and all the things, but I think it's great to have the conversation because then you can share ideas and resources and, and different things that have worked for you that may help someone else down the line. And so I feel like that's what we're doing here today is sharing what we have learned so that someone else can benefit in the process. And so first question for you is why is it important to have a budget in a spending plan like why do we need a budget why do we need to plan I listen I told you I'm terrible at it so I want to hear your reason why yeah and I think the word budget like I don't know over the years has just gotten like such a bad reputation like it's just such it just has a negative I guess connotation with for a lot of people it's like oh budgeting like that sounds so boring so miserable really all a budget is is just telling your money where to go like that when you break it down at the end of the day A budget is just telling your money where you want it to go. And the wonderful thing is you get to decide where you want your money to go. So, you know, of course you have your bills as everyone does, but after that, once you kind of work out that part of your budget, you can decide your extra money. Is it going to 
um, extra to debt? Is it going to savings goals? Is it going to something you want, like something you want to spend money on? So all a budget is, is, you know, telling your money where to go, which is what everyone needs, because if you don't create a budget, then it's going to be very hard to reach those, you know, big goals. And then 10, 20, 30 years down the line, you'll be like, wait, I made kind of good money, but I don't have any of it. Like, where did my money go? I make decent income, but I don't see that reflected in my savings or in my investments or anything like that. So the earlier you kind of get that budget and spending plan together, you know, the, the not necessarily easier, but the better it will be in the long run because, you know, you will be able to reach those goals and then you can spend your money on travel, your kids, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be Budgets don't have to be restrictive and budgets don't have to be this like boring, I don't know, thing. <laughs> it's funny because when you were saying that, that budgets have gotten a bad rep. Yes, so true. Because when you were saying it, it made me think budget to me made me feel like I had boundaries mm -hmm. and I don't like the idea of feeling like restricted or in a box or shackled. However, the way you just described it to me when you said, yeah, um, creating a budget is telling your money where to go. It made me think about it's actually creating a roadmap to success or the places yeah. that you say you want to go. So here is the plan to actually get there. You can't see because I'm on a podcast, but I yeah. have Starbucks, you know, so like Starbucks can be in your budget. Travel can be in your budget. Whatever you want can be in your budget. It doesn't have to just be expenses and that's it. And, you know, that's your budget, like add in the things you enjoy, then you're more likely to stick to it. You know, your budget should be flexible. It isn't this like rigid, you know, thing that doesn't ever change. Like mm -hmm. doesn't, yeah, it kind of is, I think it just got a bad rep. And now we're, I'm trying to change the narrative with budgets. And if you don't like the word budget, call it something else. I don't call it just That's your been plan. Been call it your roadmap. Really yeah. <laughs> call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You just need to tell your money where to go so that you can reach those, you know, big financial goals that you have. No, I love that. And like you said, it can be a spending plan. It could be a roadmap, money roadmap. It can be whatever you want it to be. But as long as you know what the big goal is, then that's the most important thing. Exactly. Uh, and it's funny, you just mentioned Starbucks and you personally paid off six figures worth of debt while still enjoying your favorite perks, Starbucks. <laughs> so what are the first steps someone should take when they are trying to create a flexible budget spending plan or whatever you want to call it that they can actually stick to? So give us some steps, Allie. Yeah. So first thing you need to know what is happening today. I think a lot of people try to skip right to the budget. They're like, okay, I have to write my budget, but you're going to be creating a budget based on numbers you want to be correct, but they aren't. So first you need to, you know, it's, it's the most annoying step. I always tell anyone I work with, like, this is the worst step, <laughs> but it's necessary. So you have to go through all of your accounts. You have to track your expenses at least for a month, you know, write down how much is in your check accounts, how much is in your saving accounts, how much debt you have, interest rates, where is your money going today? As of, you know, an average month, obviously choosing December probably isn't like the best month because of the holidays. So choose like an average month, track your expenses, see where your money's going. Once you know where it's going, then you can start working on the budget because, you know, a lot of people like food is their biggest expense or groceries or something like that. So they might be like, oh, I, you know, I'm going to budget $200 a week on groceries or a hundred dollars a week. But if you're always spending $400 a week and that's what your actual numbers are showing you, you budgeting 200 is never going to work. You're always going to be off. And then you're going to be like, well, my budget doesn't work. Throw in the towel, move on. So we need a budget based on actual numbers, not what we necessarily want. Of course, if there's a huge gap, you realize you're spending $600 a week on food and you're like, whoa, that's a little out of control. I really think 400 might be more reasonable. Maybe you decrease it to the goal is 550 for a month and then 500 until you get to a place you're comfortable with, but you don't have to make these like drastic cuts in one month because you're not going to stick to it. So first step, do what I call money audit, look at what's going on current state. And then from there, you can create your budget, spending plan, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's based on real numbers, not our imaginary, what we'd like to spend the numbers. I love that. And I like how you made a great point to say, do not use the month of December, because as I was trying to put together a new budget and new spending plan, I'm like, December makes no sense because we spent way too much money because of the holiday and, and all the things. And then another thing is a month that we've traveled or went on a vacation and you have extra charges 
you know, so I like the idea of picking an average month where maybe if you have children, your kids are in school, it's very, it feels very much like the snapshot of your reality. That makes more sense. And so uh, that's a great uh, tip there. So first thing you want to do is do that money audit and get realistic because I've done that where I've said, oh, maybe like 200 on groceries, like starting just pulling numbers from the sky. And that's not helpful when I'm actually spending 300 of going to Target and picking up things I don't need. And so putting something that's realistic and then getting excited when you actually are saving and not just in the hole every week. And then I'm, and you, like you said it, I'm throwing it out the window. Like this doesn't work. Why, why, we're not gonna do this. But now I'm at a point where I'm challenging myself, like how much would I normally spend on the Target run versus what I'm spending now? And I'm already seeing a difference because I'm, I'm making it almost like a game as well. Like let's save and do some things there. Um, okay, so we gonna do the money audit and all of that. What do you feel like we should do next? Yeah, so from there, you're gonna you know use your actual numbers and start creating your budget. I always recommend budgeting per paycheck if possible. I found after doing my own budget and client and hundreds of client budgets, you're more likely to stick to a budget if you budget per paycheck instead of the overall monthly budget. Because with the monthly budget, usually you start it, you know, you create it at the beginning of the month and then you check it at the end of the month. So if something's wrong, you're being now reactive instead of proactive. You're not really checking in throughout the month. Usually that's normally the case with monthly budgets. Of course, there are exceptions. So if you budget per paycheck or weekly or something like that, if you know, if you have a spouse or a partner and you have combined finances, you can do it weekly if you get, you know, paid at different points in the month. But then you're checking in every week. So if you had a bad week, say you budgeted a hundred dollars for groceries and you went over by, you know, it was 150 and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm off. Instead of waiting till the end of the month and, you know, reacting, now you have three more weeks of the month to figure out what changes you can make to still make up that kind of, you know, negative part of the month. So if you're, you know, over by 50, then maybe the next week you cut something a little bit so that you kind of can build that 50 into the next week so that you're still like quote unquote, even at the end of the month. And then you're just checking in way more often and checking in can be five minutes. I think people think budgeting takes hours and it might take a little bit to set up in the beginning. Like whenever I set it up with clients, of course, the first month is sometimes a little bit messy. Second month still might be messy. But after that, you kind of get in a routine and you check in every Friday or so, look at what's going on, make adjustments, move on. This doesn't have to be a four hour event where you're stressed out and checking into everything. So um, then you would create your budget. Of course, your core expenses would be first and then anything left over. Once your expenses are there, you can allocate to debt. Saving spending is kind of my main categories. And if the amount left over isn't where you want it, then of course you have to go back and that's when you start reducing expenses. But you don't always have to reduce expenses if that amount is you know where you need to reach your goal. So first kind of map it all out, write it out, and then you can decide, is there something I want to cut? Are there subscriptions in there I don't even use anymore? You know, maybe I forgot I hope that free trial ended and now I'm paying $19.99 a month for something I, you know, never use or don't need. And that's an easy thing to cut. Um, so first, once you do the money audit, then you can start plugging in your budget and then allocating that, you know, extra money to your debt savings spending goals. Mm, so good. I'm taking notes here because that's something the um, auto payments and subscriptions and free trials, we all have been victims of forgetting to cancel a free trial. And so um, this is a great opportunity for you to go through your banking and see if you've been charged for those little things add up. And so just checking that. But I love the idea of not creating a monthly budget because Honestly, as I'm thinking about it, that's what I'm doing now. But the idea of when you get you're getting paid, if you are someone that gets paid every two weeks, instead of the snowball effect and letting things get out of control, it's breaking it down. And I love the idea of putting on your calendar a time where you're going to just do a, that five minute budget check in or 10 minutes or whatever to go through your receipts, go through your statements update as usual and again to continue to challenge yourself to just stay on top of it if you know you do have a big goal um, you got to do the work so I think that is awesome um, let's pivot a little bit because I mentioned that you did pay off that your own personal debts and all the things can you just give a quick background on how that all happened and what you actually did to make it happen 
Yeah. So I um, became debt free at 25. I'm 30. <laughs> um, personal, like my as an individual. And then I met my husband at 23. He's wonderful. He had um, $154,000 of debt when we met or he had it. So when I married, I was debt free, but then married into six figures of debt. <laughs> so then I had to pay off debt all over again, <laughs> which was fun. Um, Ooh, two times. So you, yeah. you know how to do all of this. So I, yeah, <laughs> we need to hear all the tricks. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I've done it as an individual and then also as, you know, a married combined finance couple. Um which honestly is harder in my opinion, uh, cause you have multiple opinions and wants and, you know, just mindsets and money pass. And there's a lot going on when you do it as a couple. Um, so he knew it was around six figures when we were dating. I was the person on like our fourth date talking about finances, <laughs> the weirdo on, um, our date, but he was like, I think it's a hundred K. And I was like, okay, you know, kind of accepted it when we actually were engaged and starting to budget together and totaled it up and ended up 154 which he genuinely didn't know because he was one of those people who just paid the minimum and was like, I'm just going to pay the minimum forever type of mindset. So he was shocked and I was shocked because I was like, 154 is not the same as 100 when you think of dead. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of where we started. And that took years to pay. Like we weren't making millions, um, still aren't. So it wasn't something we could just like pay off in a year. Um, I always say, you know, as individuals, we didn't hit six figures combined. We hit six figures as a couple. So salary wise, it's not like we were making, we were making average of a combined married couple. Um, and I didn't want to cut everything as we talked about briefly. I'm a big college football fan. I wanted my season tickets, which I still have still had them through debt. I get Starbucks. He's now addicted to Starbucks. Too. <laughs> so for, I, I was like, the only way we're going to do this and stick to it is if we still allow ourselves some kind of spending. Of course, we couldn't just, you know, do whatever we wanted. It was a budgeted spending, but we were able to pay off debt, still save, still invest for retirement and, you know, spend on things we want while paying off six figures of debt. And I think anyone can do it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. And I truly, truly believe that. It's interesting because that's, you, you sound like my husband where we love to travel and, you know, we like to reward our kids and, and just little things here and there. And for him, he's like, I'm not a cold turkey person where we're just going to cut everything out because we'll be miserable. And again, the goal should be to make it feel like fun or a challenge or excitement. And so you can find areas to trim the fat. You can find ways to, to look for hidden money or look for things that you just don't need we were like, all right, we have HBO, um, what is it, Max, and you have mm -hmm. Netflix and Hulu. It's like, do we need all of these? We cut cable years ago, but now we're at a point where we're like, okay, can we now save in this area as well? What can, how can we be better with the food and, and the shopping and the groceries and being very intentional about what we pick up? And that alone is already saving us throughout the week. And so I hear what you're saying where you, it can be done, but it has to be done intentionally. I think exactly. that's super important. So something I'm going to also look into is like, all right, on a day to day, what can I cut out that is not going to make me miserable? Right. <laughs> and then I'll get excited about this whole idea of a new spending plan. Um, and then thinking about the budget overall, when people are trying to create a realistic budget, what are some things that we forget? What are the things that we are like, oh man, I forgot to budget for that. And then it's like, here we are. Yeah. So one thing I have like that I do in my programs is what's called like just a year overview is I pretty much have my clients like map out their year with random things that come up just because that's a lot of the stuff that we forget. And of course you won't know your whole year at once. So you're filling it out as you go, but you think of like annual renewals or subscriptions that renew annually. Like for example, Amazon prime, I pay every year. So I have a reminder when that's coming so I can make sure that's added to my budget, you know, for that month. Um, holidays obviously come up. And if you're not prepared for that, you're going to overspend. It's just the fact of the matter because, you know, it's very easy around the holidays to overspend. Um, birthdays, like, are you going to buy, you know, do you buy gifts? Do you mail cards? Like things like that. Um, repairs, like I always make sure, you know, you're having savings goals for like repairs or 
pets. Um, we've had many medical issues with dogs in the past, including this year. So we have a pet sinking fund. We have repair sinking funds, like oil changes, tires, random house. If you own a house, something's going to come up at some point. Um, home repairs. Um, a lot of those expenses. Yeah. If you go through your calendar, I always tell people, if you go through your calendar for like, you know, it's the beginning of the year. So it's the perfect time for 2021 go through like your Google calendar or something like that of the whole year and just see what happened that you maybe weren't financially prepared for weddings. Like a lot of the weddings that have been postponed for me, you know, that I've been go that I'm going to are now in 2022. So I have like multiple weddings in 2022. Um, things like that kind of just go through and see like what has come up that you kind of weren't prepared for. Like we talked about subscriptions. Usually someone's forgetting one of those because you forgot that you even signed up for that yeah so yeah those are good I started actually making a, a list as you were naming things and on my list uh school events like if kids if you have children uh field trips or if you have to pay um for something that they're doing in the school school supplies extra from a grocery list um I'm, I live in Virginia and we pay personal property taxes so sometimes people forget those big hefty numbers uh, gifts, like you said, birthday gifts for people. Um, if you're doing happy hour or your friends in town, you want to grab drinks, uh, co-pays. I know when I go to the doctor or have prescriptions. And then if you are a creative and you're doing some networking and going to conferences, even if you have a business budget, people forget you need outfits. You need to make sure you have, you know, your flights, you need to, your Uber, whatever it is, literally take an overall look at the scope of what your life looks like. And cause every single penny needs to be accounted for. So I have my list of things to go through on my calendar as I start to put together my spending plan. So that was super helpful. Yeah. Um, and so you mentioned when you got married that you had to alter some things. And so we all know the game changes when you get into a relationship for many reasons, but if you are trying to combine finances what are some things, tips, steps that you feel like we should be taking into consideration? Yeah, so the first thing is understanding that you and your partner probably have different money paths. So like how you were raised about, you know, raised um, how your parents spoke or didn't speak about money or actions you saw or didn't see, they're probably different. I mean, or at least in some way, like for me and my husband, we weren't raised the same when it comes to money conversations or even understanding like what a credit card is and getting into credit card debt or things like that. So having open conversations, I think is important just so you understand each other a little bit better. Like maybe you do something a certain way and you realize your partner like does it completely opposite. And maybe there's a reason behind that and you can kind of compromise. It's not always, it's not just about the numbers. It's also about like the habits and understanding each other as people too, because, <laughs> you know, money is involved in obviously every aspect of our lives in some way. Um, but we need to understand why we have certain habits. So, and also what's important to each of you as individuals. I always say when I work with married couples is like, you can combine finances. We do it. It makes my life a thousand times easier for paying bills and saving. And I'm the one that manages our finances on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's just easier to go into an account, pay it, instead of trying to figure out like, oh, you pay this, I pay this, but you should still have individual spending money even within that. So within our budget, each month we kind of get an allowance if you want to lack of a better term um so i get an allowance he gets an allowance it goes into separate checking accounts um that is kind of our no questions asked money so i genuinely don't know what he spends it on i don't ask i really don't care because it's budgeted mine usually goes to like food or amazon or something <laughs> but it gives us our own freedom to not have to check in for like every little expense like oh can I get this it's ten dollars or oh this is twenty dollars or based on your budget and your goals you can just set the amount for us it's just 75 dollars a month right now so it's not extravagant but it kind of you can let it add up you can spend it all in a month it just gives us our own spending money and then of course we're combined so it, it kind of is best of both worlds I found that works for most couples that I've worked with um and that's definitely something I recommend at least looking into if you're combining finances so that you can still have your own quote, you have your own money to an extent. Yeah, it's interesting because this year, I think we're going on 14 years of marriage and we've always had that same mindset that number one, if you are in a relationship and a couple, you don't want a situation where one person 
has all this money and the other person is just poor and you want to go on trips, you want to live life, you want to celebrate. And then the person with all the money can do all the things. And the other person who's supposed to be your equal has nothing, then that's, that doesn't always feel good. And so it's nice to combine the finances so that you are literally a team on the same playing field. And we've always had the mindset of having our own individual checking accounts for the same reasons you just mentioned. Like if he wants to buy me a gift or vice versa, I don't want to just be seeing the charges. Like I want to be surprised. I want to know um, that I can, if I do want to buy extra makeup or do whatever, that I can do that because there is money that is allocated for me, like fun money to do whatever mm-hmm. you want. And he'll have his fun money. And I think that is important, but we still have a common goal, which is our main budget, our main account and all the things, but uh, you do have to plan for it. You have to figure out what's fair. You do have to figure out, um, you know, what that looks like for your uh, family and relationships. And I think that's the beauty of it. No two families are the same. So you can definitely adjust to what works for you. And if you decide not to combine finances, that's your prerogative too. But as you do figure out a spending plan, try to look at all the different options before you land on on one. Um, I think that's so important. And then also I'm at the age where I have friends who are starting families and even expanding families. And so if you want to financially prepare for a family or even just set your family up for success, what are some steps or things that we need to take into consideration there? Yeah. So it's funny. That's a question. Cause I, I have a one-year-old. And so when I was on maternity leave in 2020, I like created a whole course <laughs> that's called babies and budgets and it's a self-paced so course. Um, and it's pretty much everything I learned from and like prepared for to have a child. So like going over health insurance terms, like understanding, you know, my benefits because I had to like, you know, I, Thankfully, I'm a decently healthy person. I mean, I have a few issues, but for the most part, I'm decently healthy. So I haven't didn't have all those same medical bills until I had a kid and going to the doctor all the time and he was late and I had to get an iron infusion. Anyway, long story short, I had a lot of things that if I wasn't financially prepared for them, they would have been pretty costly. Um, so when you are thinking, even if it's a year out or you may, maybe you want to start, this is a perfect time to start like a sinking fund or a savings account for that future goal. Um, because worst case scenario, you decide you never want kids after that and you just reallocate that money to another goal. Like there's never a harm in saving. Yeah. Um, if you decide you don't need that or you save too much, you can just reallocate it. So when you are thinking um, about financially preparing for a family, of course, like what are your health benefits? Are you going to be changing jobs? Like really understanding your health insurance. That was the first time I really dug into like my co-pays and my um, deductible and my out-of-pocket max and like, what is all this, you know, what is going on? Um, think about any kind of loss of income. If you're taking time off, if you're, is your maternity leave paid? Is it not paid? Does your spouse get any kind of paternity leave or anything like that? Really understanding if you're only, if you're taking 12 weeks and say you're paid for six, you have to make up that six weeks of income. Um, you know, what type of stuff would you need? And then just setting a savings goal and trying to reach that before. Um, that's kind of what I, at least that's what I did when financially preparing for my son, um, who, you know, we tried to keep things pretty simple. Like we don't have a Pinterest nursery or anything <laughs> like that. It's pretty basic, but of course there's still expenses that you can't avoid when it comes to having a kid yeah. and they get more expensive. I think, I mean, I'm only oh, yes, a year a year yeah. and a half in and the amount he eats is wild. <laughs> I'm like, how do you eat so much for a 15 month old or whatever? That's like hilarious. he eats so much food. So then thinking like, like you said, school events, like we have a sinking fund. We have fun just for him. Um, that's for future events. We have a uh, 529 for college for him. And we have a UGMA, a brokerage account for him. So then thinking, how would you want to save for your children? If you want to provide any kind of financial, um, you know, investments or gains for them. And then obviously there's a lot more goes into it, but those are kind of questions I would say to start kind of asking. Well, that's, that's phenomenal. They, these are great tips because I was just thinking off the break diapers or formula, if that's not in your normal budget now, and you know, you want to plan for a family, start running some numbers and averages to figure out how that will fit into your 
budget, the new lifestyle and all the things, clothes for children. Like if, we're, if we stay the same size nine times out of 10, but the children are continuously growing. And we just cleaned out my daughter's closet. She'll be 12 in two months. And so she's growing and it's like, okay, I just bought you clothes, but they grow when you feed them. <laughs> so it's a situation where we're always buying clothes and we're always um, they're evolving. And so we have to take that into consideration. So that's a line item in our budget now is clothing for them, shoes, because they're going to outgrow things. And so um, what's the name of your course again? Because all of this is super helpful. Yeah, it's called Babies and Budgets. Super. Okay. I'm not a creative. My mind is strategic, not creative. So very basic. <laughs> I love it. Title. It's on my website. It's a self-paced course. It has like, I even go over different, um, like, like I said, 529, UGMA, like UTMA, all the accounts for your kid. Um, you can, it's a pretty easy course to go through. It was just for me, I wanted a resource that is like super easy to follow. That's like, okay, if I'm thinking of having kids, or maybe I just found out I'm pregnant, or even if you're a few months in, what do I, what, what is coming? What do I need to know? How do I prepare? So, it, yeah. you know, the worst thing I always say, like, obviously when you're a new mom in the postpartum phase, like you don't want to have to be worrying about how you're going to pay your bills, things coming up, the finances. So if you can remove some of that financial stress from it and just focus on the healing, the baby, the, you know, the, the changes in your life, it just is one less stressor that you have to, you know, worry about. Yeah, that, that's great. And I'll add all this to the show notes and the website and all the things, but it just also made me think it's a great gift for someone as well that, you know, is planning for a family. And I, I love the idea of feeling like there is a resource with all the things so that you can just go through it. So pay. So I definitely want to make sure we include that for our listeners um, as well. And so I am curious to know, uh, Ali, what are some of your favorite budgeting tools, software resources as well? I've been doing some research. It's a little overwhelming, but what do you feel like has worked for you, your clients and tried yeah. and true? Yeah, there's so many, like I've tried like the phone apps. They just don't work for me. I know some people love like me. I, right, I don't personally love phone apps. Um, some people like are obsessed with phone apps and that that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just, I just don't think they work for me, for my life. Um, I just use a super simple <laughs> Google Sheets file um, that I created and that most of my clients use the file I created. Um, I'm very basic. I feel like there's a lot of really fancy templates out there, which is great, but I, I don't need eight charts. I just need to know like where my, like, I just need the final number of the week, you know, where what's happening, very basic. And it can take you like, you know, two seconds to create your own. If you don't want, I like it on Google sheets because then my husband has access to it too. Does he check it? No, but you know, he can, if he wants, um, it's just simple. I can pull it up anywhere on my phone, computer. If I'm on a different computer, I can pull it up. So it's not like locked in, you know, Excel, but it, some people love Excel. I just, that's how my brain operates is super simple. Um, I, you know, I have worksheets that you can print and use too that are in my programs, but some people like pen and paper and like, you know, a binder, which I've tried personally, I've tried it. It doesn't, I'm never going to update it. <laughs> realistically yeah. for me. Um, so I'm just simple Google Sheets, pretty basic file is what I what I use, but there's so many out there. I mean, I'd say if you haven't found something you like, just keep trying different things, edit it. I literally, every single person I work with, I always say, I'm like, I have templates, try them. If you hate them, I'm not offended. I just want something that you'll actually use. So don't use it for me. You know, use it. I want something that like works for you and your life that you'll actually check because downloading templates just to say you downloaded a template doesn't help anyone. You know? That is so true. And it's interesting um, because I'm in the process of downloading and trying different software. And I realized I do not like software that is just on the phone. I need a desktop version. It's great if you can sync it on the go with your phone, but I need to sit at my desk and be able to see it on a big screen and start just letting things kind of sync. And I, I need a desktop version. Um, I've, I've used Mint in the past as well. I saw a commercial for Simplify, which is through Quicken. Um, there's also for business people, QuickBooks as well. You need a budget, but that one's a little bit more costly. Um, 
there's one I just came across actually yesterday, Honeydew, which is for couples, but it's a phone based one where you can all stay on the same track and also know where your, um, what your due dates are for utilities and all that. Cause that's important. If not, if one person is handling all the bills, that's great. But if someone else is handling, you just want to always be on the same page. And I told people too, in the case of an emergency, God forbid, you know, we're in the, in a pandemic, someone is sick. How do I even know what to do, when, and what to pay so we don't fall behind? So even though one person manages all the money, the other person in the relationship should be able to at least access accounts or have an overview because that's important because every anything is possible we've learned over the last couple of years and someone can be healthy today and sick tomorrow. So you don't want to fall behind. So make sure you have access to all the things um, as well. And I can tell some people are going to be like, damn, I don't even know how to pay the water bill like what's the name of the electric company that we pay oh yeah <laughs> yeah so when I, I um, went to the hospital to like give birth I literally was like just you don't you just don't know what can happen obviously it's my first time terrified yeah and I had on my computer like this what you're describing pretty much for my husband I'm like these are all the accounts I mean he knows where our budget is and all that and what days think it has what days get things get paid but I'm like these are our accounts like this you're the beneficiary of these like you know if we have a son obviously and I was like if he makes it like this is the accounts I want you to open for him you know like I had it oh, all mapped it. out like fully ready for everything um because like you said you just you don't know and to your point like I manage everything on a you know a daily basis um but if something happened he knows at least how to log into everything what's yeah. okay what's due what's going on and um, it's so important if you're a couple that you do know, you know, even what debt you have, what debt you paid off, like how the many plan. savings accounts do you have? You need to know all that. Both yeah, you, you definitely yeah. need to know the plan, the overall goal of where you're trying to be, the steps that are being taken to get there, the amount of money that's pumping out, that's coming from your paycheck and their paycheck, and everything needs to be transparent. And so I just love this conversation because I feel like it's going to be the catalyst to some people just having those hard money conversations, but I don't want it to feel hard. I want people to feel like the excitement to work together as a team to reach a common goal. Like that to me is what this should definitely be. And if you are someone that is single, you can have your stuff together so that when you do go into a new relationship, that's one less worry or thing you have to worry about. So that's super important. And so let's shift gears as we close out. So obviously the name of this podcast is Living Well-Rounded and we do not believe in the word balance at all, but you run a business, you have a lot of uh, clients and students and your courses, your mom, wife, all the things. So Ali, what is your definition of living well-rounded? Oh gosh, I feel like it's at this point, it's just coffee now. <laughs> um, I, I totally agree with you on the balance thing. I always say, like, how do you balance it all? I'm like, I don't, I 0% balance any of it. Um, I think for me, it's been, I I'm very type a and really just scheduling in time for certain things and making sure I am prioritizing my family above my work. And I've not always done that. Um, because like my, my, I'm, you know, that's not how I was raised. Um, and so well-rounded to me is just making time, spending time doing what I love, which is spending time with my husband and my son, going to football games, not worrying about money. I mean, I think you are able to live well-rounded in my opinion, once your finances are in order, because if not, that stressor is always going to be there. It affects literally everything we do, even if we don't want to admit it. Um, so for me, I am able to give to others, which is really important to me and donate, which I'd love to do more of in the future. Um, I'm able to take time off and actually go on trips and not feel guilty about it and not stress about how am I going to pay for this trip? Um, because it's already paid for before I go and it's all budgeted and I can come back and go back to my life and, you know, be fine. And, um, I think just sh shifting gears and realizing in certain seasons of life, certain things might take priority over others, which is totally fine. And, um, still working on the complete well-roundedness, but I feel like we I'm all are. <laughs> we all are. We are always a work in progress. And, and I love how you mentioned, you know, the, the seasons, cause we talk a lot about seasons on the show and what your season looks like now may be completely different six months from now, but it's okay to have those ebbs and flows and to adjust in order to feel the fulfillment of, um, being well-rounded. And so, um, I, you know, I love your thoughts on it as well of 
the fact that when your finances are in order, you can live well-rounded because that'll always be something like in the back of your head that you're stressing about and, and we don't want that. And speaking of seasons, what are you most looking forward to in this next season of your life? Oh gosh, a toddler. No. <laughs> <laughs> Get um, ready. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's so wild, but it's fun because he like understands things now. Um, I think I, I've definitely shifted gears in my business. Um, I don't have, you know, I don't take really one-on-one -on -one clients anymore. And I've focused more on my group program and uh, my courses. And so I think the shift from business to family or kind of finding that more transition, especially now that I have a toddler who's a crazy little boy. <laughs> um, and just seeing, you know, what changes he has and just enjoying life, hopefully being able to travel at some point this year, knock on wood with everything going no, on. Right. Knock, um, knock. Yes. Kind of just, you know, relaxing, which I'm not very good at. So <laughs> That is super challenging to relax, but yeah. uh, it is fun to have the toddler running around and watching them explore things. So that is something uh, exciting. I will say I miss it, but I do not ever plan to go back down that road <laughs> again. Uh, with my kids being almost 12 and seven at this point, we're good there. Uh, so let's do some uh, rapid fire and, and or this or that and learn a little bit more about you on a personal level. So Allie, you mentioned travel. You want to do a European vacay or Caribbean getaway? Definitely Caribbean. I'm just trying to lay on the beach, have someone bring me a drinks nonstop yeah. and food, and I'm not moving for the whole day. <laughs> yes. So if you're stuck on this island, what are three things that you must have with you? Oh, gosh. Um, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> There's that Starbucks again. <laughs> yeah, coffee. If I'm stuck on island. I'm going to be practical and be like sunscreen or else I'm going to be burnt and miserable. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, third, oh gosh, I don't know. Some kind of snack. I just am a snacker. I think I could eat all day. Like I'm someone who literally has <laughs> snacks next to me at all times. Oh, that's me. Yep. Yeah. So I definitely need food or I'll get hangry real fast. <laughs> and my husband hates when I get hangry because I'm just mad at everyone. <laughs> Oh man. So what was your first job? Um, babysitting. I actually put flyer, I printed flyers and I walked around my neighborhood and put them. I was like 11 or 12. Um, and I put flyers in mailboxes <laughs> with like my name and my home phone number. Cause obviously didn't have a cell phone slash cell phones weren't really, you know, <laughs> a thing. And I like put my, my walked around with my mom and put flyers in my neighbor's mailboxes. And I got a few, um, babysitting gigs that way and yeah that was my first quote-unquote unofficial job because I was on you know not age of working but right right yeah no, that, that's <laughs> awesome so if you could hire a personal chef once a week cleaning service or a personal driver which one are you grabbing up a chef I hate to cook I never want to I want to order it <laughs> every day so definitely a personal chef <laughs> I love it. And you mentioned a drink on the beach as well. So what are you going to, well, how about, what are you drinking at a bar? If you're at a bar with friends, what are you grabbing? Um, if I'm in, I'm in South Carolina. So if I'm in South Carolina, it's really cheap. So I'm definitely getting some kind of liquor drink, but if I'm in New York, which is where I was born and raised, I'm getting the cheapest beer on the menu. Cause the beer is still going to be like $15, $20. So, <laughs> oh man. Oh man. And then last question, what is something on your bucket list? Uh, my big bucket, one of my big bucket list items I always talk about is like, I would love to walk into like a restaurant or somewhere and just like hand someone a thousand dollars and walk out, you know, and like just oh, no wow. questions asked, like not for class, like nothing. I just, I always say, I'm like, I want to make more money so I can give more. Cause the more you have, I just feel like the more you can do, of course mm -hmm. you can do things small now but I just would love to be able to like donate insane amounts of money that's one of my like big my big goals I guess it's not really bucket list but I can't do it currently so it's kind of bucket list <laughs> I think that is awesome and just the thought of how many people will be blessed because obviously we know you are 
on track to do that and big, big things as well. Um, so I'm excited uh, to, you said you're not going to talk about it much, but you can always slide into my DMs and be like, <laughs> girl, I did it. Yes. And I'll be so excited for you in the process. Ali, thank you so much for joining me and our audience. I am actually pumped and more motivated to get my finances in order. Uh, so thank you for that. And so where can our well-rounders um, find you on the web? Yeah, so my website um, is financially focused, pretty much if you spell financially with an I at the end, because it's like Allie. Um, my website has blog posts, everything, you, my programs, courses, and pretty much it's a one-stop shop. Um, Instagram, I'm on way too often, but uh, <laughs> my Instagram uh, is financially focused too. Say hi, send me a message, let me know what you liked most about the episode. Um, those are kind of the best places to find me most up to date would be either my website or Instagram. Um, I have a free course. It's on my website too. If you just do financiallyfocused.com slash foundations, completely free um, course. It takes an hour to go through, but the videos are like three to four minutes. So you don't have to do it in an hour, but it's only an hour. Um, so that's a good place to start if you're kind of like completely new, ready to go is that free course. And then I have, of course, my group program. Um, which is a 12 week program. You cover it all. You get me. It's a lot of fun. Um, and that I run a few times a year, but the course is a great place to start. And then I have my courses, like we talked about the phase and budgets okay. course and a few others. So the website. Has all it of that. And I will definitely drop it in the show notes because you do have a wealth of information and friends, if you are tuned in, as Ali said, make sure you screenshot and tag, uh, tag both yeah. of us over on IG. I am at I am living well rounded and Ali is at financially Ali. And so all the information in the show notes. Thank you guys for joining us and thank you Ali for being an amazing guest and I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yes. Bye guys. Wowzers. So my brain is spinning and I am seriously going to sit down and get some things in order. And I challenge you friends to do the same. I know we all may have budgets or may have been trying to do things on our own for the past couple of years, but I feel like, again, if we're going to make 2022 our best year yet, let's make some changes. Let's do the work. Let's do the things that feel challenging so that we can ultimately get to where we want to be. And so if you are down and you feel like you're going to be making some adjustments or adding some of the tips that Ali shared send me a DM or an email. All of the details are in the show notes and let's hold each other accountable. All right. I hope that again, you've learned something that will be a blessing to you, your family, your friends. So be sure to share this episode as well. Until then, stay safe, stay positive and focus on what matters most. And we will chat soon. Bye friend. Thanks for kicking it with us, Well-Rounder. Share this goodness with your squad and drop us a quick review. Get notified of new episodes by hitting the subscribe button. Until next time, seek a well-rounded life and remember to focus on what matters most.